The best life lesson I've ever heard comes from the story of a young fisherman named Luca. In a quaint coastal village, seemingly forgotten by time, there lived this humble fisherman. Picture this. Endless blue waves, the scent of salt in the air, and a simple life revolving around the rhythm of the tides. One fateful day, after a violent storm, Luca found himself strolling along the beach, his mind wandering as he soaked in the serene beauty of the post-storm calm. Amidst the debris washed ashore, he spotted an injured seagull, its feathers tangled in a discarded fishing net, eyes filled with pain and despair. Moved by deep compassion, Luca didn't hesitate to help. Carefully, he untangled the bird from the nets and took it to his small cabin. There he fed it and tended to its wounds, hoping it would regain strength to return to the sky. As the days passed, the seagull, whom Luca named Mia, seemed to come back to life. She followed him around the house and even seemed to listen when he told stories about the sea and its mysteries. Luca felt a growing joy, believing he had made a new friend he could trust. However, as Mia grew stronger, her behavior began to change. She became possessive of the food and aggressive towards other birds that came near. Concerned, Luca tried to calm her, but Mia seemed to no longer recognize her savior's kindness. Then, on a sunny morning, as Luca opened the window for Mia to feel the sea breeze, something unexpected happened. As he approached to stroke her feathers, Mia, in a sudden impulse, pecked Luca's hand hard and flew away without looking back. Luca stood there, his hand bleeding, his heart broken by the betrayal of the one he had helped and cared for. The pain Mia caused was healed with time, but the lesson stayed with Luca forever. He learned that sometimes, in our eagerness to help and trust, we can ignore the true nature of things and people. Luca would still help others, but now he knew that some creatures are meant to be free and wild, and trust and gratitude are not always reciprocated. This story reminds us of the complexity of trust relationships and the expectations we place on others, even when our intentions are pure. Luca never stopped loving the sea and its inhabitants, but now he knew he had to respect each one's nature, even if it meant keeping a distance. Now, let's delve into the first type of person we should be cautious about helping. Number 1. The Ungrateful The first type of person we should avoid helping is the ungrateful. These individuals, after receiving help, fail to show any sign of gratitude. They may even criticize or disdain the help given to them. This can happen for various reasons. Some may feel that the help didn't exactly meet their expectations, while others may simply have a nature that doesn't value others' efforts. Imagine dedicating your time, effort, and sometimes financial resources to help someone only to receive complaints or hear that your help wasn't enough or adequate. These reactions are not only unpleasant, but can also make you question the validity of offering future assistance, not only to that person, but in general. It's demotivating and can lead to emotional burnout. Consider a scenario where you spend hours helping a friend move to a new apartment. You lift heavy furniture, organize boxes, and even spend money on snacks and refreshments for the day. But instead of a simple thank you, your friend complains about the way you organized the kitchen or how you handled the fragile items. This ingratitude can be disheartening and might make you rethink helping them in the future. Why is it important to recognize and avoid helping ungrateful people? The core of Stoic philosophy teaches us to focus on what we can control and to maintain our inner peace. When we help others and face ingratitude, it disrupts our emotional equilibrium. It's vital to understand that the problem lies not in the help provided, but in the perception and attitude of the person helped. How can we navigate this? First, don't take it personally. The ingratitude reflects their character, not your actions. Second, 
Use this experience to be more cautious in future situations. Assess the situation and the person before deeply involving yourself in helping. Remember, helping is a two-way street, and simple recognition can be the fuel for future good deeds. By directing our generosity where it will be not only useful but also valued, we align ourselves with Stoic principles, maintaining our peace and purpose. Number 2. The Lazy The second type of person we should be cautious about helping is the lazy. These individuals seem perpetually unmotivated. They have the ability but choose not to act. When we help someone who is lazy, we often think we are doing good, giving them the push they need. However, continuous help can inadvertently foster harmful dependency instead of encouraging them to take responsibility and seek independence. Picture this. You have a colleague who never meets deadlines. Initially, you feel compelled to help, thinking they're just going through a rough patch. You start taking on their tasks, staying late to ensure everything is completed, but as time goes on, you realize they've come to rely on your assistance as a certainty, not as temporary help. They have a series of excuses ready to justify their lack of action and rarely demonstrate initiative or desire for change. This scenario is frustrating and can lead to resentment. Why is it crucial to differentiate between support and enabling laziness? From a stoic perspective, helping should promote autonomy and personal growth, not keep someone in a comfortable state of inertia. Continuous help without a strategy can be counterproductive. It's essential to set clear boundaries and encourage the person to take independent actions. How can we identify and handle a lazy person? Generally, they are people who constantly resist taking on responsibilities and often expect others to solve their problems. They may have a series of excuses ready to justify their lack of action. Helping these individuals without a strategy can be counterproductive. Instead, we should support them in a way that encourages them to take responsibility. This may involve setting clear boundaries and encouraging them to take independent actions. Consider this approach. Instead of doing the work for them, guide them on how to do it themselves. This could mean setting deadlines, offering resources, and checking in periodically. By doing so, we respect their potential for growth and protect our own resources. This approach aligns with stoic principles, fostering self-reliance and resilience. Number 3. The Irresponsible Next, we have the irresponsible. This group is characterized by a tendency to constantly blame others for their own failures, making help not only ineffective but also risky. The irresponsible frequently evade their own responsibilities, attributing the blame for their mistakes or misfortunes to external factors or other people. Imagine a co-worker who fails a project and blames their team for lack of cooperation or the management for lack of support instead of analyzing their own actions or lack thereof. When we try to help someone who behaves this way, we often find ourselves in a frustrating cycle. Regardless of how much we strive to support them, our help rarely results in significant progress or change, since the person does not take responsibility for their own growth or improvement. Why should we be cautious about helping irresponsible people? Helping them without addressing their behavior can lead to us being blamed if things go wrong. This can damage our reputation and emotional well-being. From a stoic perspective, it's essential to focus on what we can control and not get entangled in the negative consequences of others' actions. How can we effectively support someone who is irresponsible? Encourage them to reflect on their actions and their consequences. Instead of simply solving problems for them, guide them to develop self-evaluation and self-management skills. This process may include setting clear goals and helping the person understand how their actions lead to certain outcomes. Consider this scenario. 
A friend is constantly late for meetings, blaming traffic or unforeseen circumstances. Instead of offering them a ride every time, help them plan better, perhaps suggesting they leave earlier or find alternative routes. By doing so, you encourage responsibility and foster personal growth, staying true to Stoic teachings. Number 4. The Manipulative Now, let's talk about the manipulative. This group is especially complicated because they are masters at exploiting others' kindness, perverting sincere attempts to help to serve their own interests without any intention of reciprocity or personal improvement. Imagine you have a friend who always seems to have a crisis and needs your help, be it financial or emotional. You step in, offering support time and again. However, you start noticing a pattern. Their crises seem to be exaggerated or even fabricated, and they rarely offer anything in return. They might shower you with flattery and promises when they need help, but once they get what they want, they disappear, only to reappear when another need arises. Why is it important to recognize and avoid helping manipulative people? Manipulative individuals can drain your energy and resources, leaving you feeling used and unappreciated. Stoicism teaches us to be mindful of our resources and to use them wisely. By helping manipulative people, we not only waste our resources, but also support their deceptive behavior. How can we protect ourselves from being manipulated? First, be aware of the signs of manipulation. These can include excessive flattery, guilt tripping, and playing the victim. Second, set clear and firm boundaries. Don't be afraid to say no and protect your resources. Finally, seek to understand the true intentions of the person seeking help. Consider this approach. If someone repeatedly seeks your help but never reciprocates or shows genuine effort to improve their situation, it's time to reconsider your involvement. Offer advice and resources, but avoid getting deeply involved in their problems. This aligns with Stoic principles, maintaining your peace and integrity while offering genuine support to those truly in need. Number 5. The Selfish the last type we'll discuss is the selfish. This group is particularly challenging because selfish individuals are self-centered and tend to see the help they receive as a right, without recognizing or valuing the efforts of others. This attitude can result in one-sided and toxic relationships where help becomes a constant expectation, not a gesture of goodwill. Imagine helping a friend who always asks for favors but never reciprocates. They expect you to help them move, lend them money, or support them in their endeavors, but when you need help, they are nowhere to be found. This selfish behavior can be exhausting and unrewarding. Why should we be cautious about helping selfish people? Helping them can lead to feelings of resentment and emotional exhaustion. From a stoic perspective, Maintaining our inner peace and emotional well-being is crucial. We should strive to help in a way that promotes mutual respect and reciprocity. How can we handle selfish people? Set clear boundaries from the beginning. Ensure that any help provided does not reinforce their selfish mindset, but encourages them to consider and appreciate others' efforts. Have open conversations about expectations and reciprocity. Clarifying that help is an act of generosity, not an obligation, can be a crucial step in fostering a change in attitude. Consider this scenario. If a friend continuously asks for help without offering anything in return, it's time to address the issue. Explain how you feel and set boundaries. If they continue to expect more without giving anything in return, it might be necessary to reduce or stop the help protecting your emotional and physical well-being. This approach aligns with Stoic principles, promoting healthy and equitable relationships. By recognizing and properly handling situations with selfish people, 
we can avoid perpetuating toxic and one-sided relationships. Instead, we promote an environment where help and gratitude are mutual, which is essential for any healthy and equitable relationship. In conclusion, understanding the types of people we should be cautious about helping is essential for maintaining our inner peace and emotional well-being. By recognizing and properly handling situations with ungrateful, lazy, irresponsible, manipulative and selfish individuals, we can avoid perpetuating toxic and one-sided relationships. Instead, we promote an environment where help and gratitude are mutual, aligning with stoic principles and fostering healthy and equitable relationships. Remember, helping others is a noble act, but it should be done with wisdom and discernment. By being mindful of whom we help and how we help, we can make a positive impact without compromising our own well-being, Drop a 100 if you've watched this far. This shows that you're the part of 0.01% who actually finish what they start. If you're serious about changing your life, make sure to join our channel by subscribing.